Hello, everyone. My name is John Bussard. I'm an HPE Business Transformation Center engineer for Ingram Micro. I help support HPE servers, blade systems, storage, as well as Aruba networking technology solutions. In my videos, what I like to do is show you a slide from a popular PowerPoint, and then demonstrate to you what that means within a management context. Today, we're going to do an unboxing video. I'm actually going to unbox an HPE Store Ever MSL 1 8 Zero Drive Tape Autoloader. And what we're going to do in this auto loaders we're going to install an LTO9 tape drive. LTO9 can hold up to 45 terabytes of space assuming compression right and this auto loader can hold eight tapes giving us 360 terabytes of space right so that's that's a tremendous amount of size. Now HP has solutions that go, go larger all the way up to 25 petabytes and these will hold lots of tapes and lots of drives but they all go down to all the way to single drive configuration so just a single drive with a single tape installed but i think this msl1 slash 8 represents a good medium and something that people would want to consider you know within their backup strategy so why tape why now well if we look at the security the overall total cost of ownership sustainability scalability and the advanced archiving you can get with one of these solutions it really makes it a pertinent solution for today's environment so so let me explain that a little bit further let's take the case of of something like ransomware so ransomware is concerned for everybody out there today um, and it's just not good enough for the ransomware creators to encrypt your data um, they realize that you're going to recover from backups if you can so what they try to do is is when they infect your environment right they try to lay low and they try to lay low so long that they you know go longer than what your backup strategy provides within your environment so that is as certainly a concern um, another piece that's wrapped around that is they like to deploy what they call a rat or a reverse access trojan which gives them access into the environment obviously that has a lot of concerns with the environment but in the case of ransomware what they want to do is they want to collect all your usernames and passwords and they want to log in things like your your storage array and delete your snapshots uh, maybe inside your backup software and delete your backup jobs all right maybe delete a repository on your DDD disk based backup system or if they can even get into the cloud right they'll delete backups within the cloud they want to get rid of all of these because that raises your likelihood of paying that ransom in your environment but with tape because it has an air gapped nature to it you can always take the tapes out of the drive right that gives you the ability to store data right without having it get infected and store it longer right than you would ever kind of imagine or as long as you want with this environment without being concerned about space that's being utilized either within your local repository or up in the cloud right so it makes a great solution for that type of environment and even if you take the tapes off site um, you don't have to be worried about somebody reading your data there's certainly ways to encrypt that data specifically I like the HP tape autoloader and MSL encryption kit which is a USB device that plugs into the back of this tape drive and allows you to encrypt your tapes so you know if somebody had found them off site they wouldn't be able to read the data out there which is very important for compliancy right and this allows you to fill a lot of compliancy concerns with customers that may have that out there maybe medical or financial have those concerns out there this allows you to be able to archive for as long as you want it's just the cost of an additional tape to be able to keep that data around within your customers environment or within your environment all right so while we're talking about cost let's talk about overall um, lower total cost of ownership and maybe sustainability with this. So let's talk about backing up to an on-prem DDD system or a disk based system or up into the cloud. All right. So if we look at backing up into the cloud, certainly the cloud's meant to be a one way street. Like they'll take your data in there, but to get it out, it's going to cost you money. All right. And we look at, you know, terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of information. If you happen to be hit with something like ransomware, to pull out an entire business out of the cloud can be very costly. Now, sometimes people will say to me, well, you know, how often does that happen? And I'll cross that bridge when we get there. But realistically, with any backup strategy, you need to test that backup strategy with your environment. And when you incorporate testing an environment that exists within the cloud right it can be very costly to be able to test that on an ongoing basis within your environment right so tape 
kind of alleviates that. Plus, we're back, backing up and restoring locally the environment, so it's quicker than maybe what you'll find coming out of the cloud. Right? So let's talk about local repositories. So there's certainly a sustainability uh, aspect or a scalability aspect to that, because when you look at local storage repositories, you're backing up to disk-based backup systems. Those are hard drives. They're energy hungry. When you need to expand, they're usually large CapEx purchases um, of drives in the environment, and they're always on, so they're always using electricity within your environment. Obviously, with the tape drive, it'll be a lower cost way of being able to sustain that environment, right? Because this does not use that much energy. And scaling out an environment is just a matter of buying additional tape. So it allows you to do more advanced archiving, more scalability within your environment. So certainly tape is a very pertinent solution for today's backup environments and should be considered as we look at our environments, especially when we're looking at you know in-depth archiving or ransomware protection type of solutions in our environment. Right, so tape, you know, certainly look at it. So I guess with all that being said, let's unbox this system. All right, here we are at our store ever MSL 1 slash 8 G2 auto loader. Um, now this is a zero drive device and that's the way you'll see in the product bulletin and quick specs only because the drive can be ordered separately because it's going to matter what version of LTO you're going to use as well as what drive interface you wish to use as well. Now as you can see I do have this split open um, but I've put everything back in so this should be an experience. Now, I didn't flip this over mainly because there is some handling information over here including information about the shipping lock so the mechanism uh, to move around the drive is locked in place the shipping and it will not operate unless you remove that lock so they're making good notice um, for you to remove that that mechanism or to move that locking device um, in here I have a package it's got a few things in it pretty standard um, we have a power cord C13 to C14, pretty standard for a rack. We also have some feet that you could put on the bottom of this device. You want to mount it on a tabletop or place it on a tabletop. There is an Ethernet cable. You want to plug this in to manage this through the RMI or the remote management interface. Of course, there is a safety and warranty information card in here. And then finally, there's some information over here about CVTL or Command View for Tape Libraries. Um, this is software that allow you to manage this storage system as well as multiple auto loaders or tape libraries um, through a single interface. And on the back, we got some information about the media that you'd want to order for the system. Right, so let's pull this up. That's one piece that comes out. And then on the inside, I have a getting started guide with some handy information. You know, it's my first time working with this device. All right, and then underneath here there is a important which again talks in about the lock that you need to remove before this will function correctly all right let me remove this from the container and we'll take a look at the top all right i have our auto loader placed on top of the box now there is a covering on this so let's get this out of here. Open this up. Now there isn't a whole bunch of interesting that's on the top. Here's the lock that they've been talking about right here. And it looks like I've pulled it out with this piece of tape. Now like I said, there's nothing much interesting on top. So what I thought would be a good idea would be to actually unbox the tape drive 
Um, this will be the LTO 9 tape drive. This one is a fiber channel tape drive. So let's take a look at this on the inside. So I suppose first I'm going to want to remove it from this container and set this box aside. And then of course remove these side pieces here. Oops. Now on top right away there was some drive installation and upgrade guide. Again, talks about installing the drive. Now this drive is made for multiple auto loaders, tape libraries to utilize. So this is just one of the systems it can go in. There is a safety and warranty compliance. And then here is some information about the LTO9 tapes that you need to do a one-time initialization of the tapes. And while we're talking about the tapes, I happen to have one over here. If you haven't seen one, all right, this will be the tape. They come in this cartridge, this box. You can open that up and actually pull out the cartridge if you want. So this is what one of the tapes looks like. And again, this is LT09, up to 45 terabytes, assuming a 2.5 to 1 compression ratio. Right, so always tapes use compression ratios, but it's a lot, that's a lot of storage space on a tape these days. I'm very surprised to see the capacities that they're getting. But this is what the tape looks like. Give you a good look at that. All right, so let's see what the drive looks like. itself. We'll flip it over. Let's see, I've got to open it up here. And pull this out. So I'll give you a good look at all the sides of the tape drive. So while we're on the back, so what can we see here? Um, there is a Ethernet port over there. I'm told it's used for some um, advanced features on some of the libraries in order to be able to do media verification. Um, over here are two ports, two fiber channel ports, because obviously redundancy is very important. So we'll take a look at this and we'll slide it in and lock it in place in on the back. All right, here's the back of our store ever MSL 1 slash 8 G2 auto loader. And again, this was a zero drive config, but like I mentioned, we are going to install our tape drive, and this is the direction it will go in. Um, we could look at the front. Now, HP has a dra track record of supporting tape drives um, across their tape libraries, so this will be used in a variety of their tape libraries. Um, they also have a great track record of supporting older technologies. So, for example, you can buy a tape drive for this system that goes back to LTO 6 if you needed to, or if you had one of those, put that in. But even LTO technology in of itself is backwards compatible. So, for example, if you had LTO 8 tape drives, you could put them inside this LTO 9 tape drive and read and write them. Right, so a lot of compatibility. Um, HP has a great track record for supportability across systems as well as generations. All right. So let's put this tape drive in the system. It's pretty easy. You just kind of put it into the slot and slide it in. It'll click. And then you'll screw it on down with these little blue screws. Now one thing I would like to note when we look at the front, the magazines will be locked into place. If you needed to release them manually, there are release buttons down here as well as over here. All right, so you got to put a paper clip in those in order to be able to pull those out. Um, 
Let's see what else over here is the power supply. So certainly there's the power connector as well as the fan. Um, here is our support tag. So it's got our serial number and important information that support might need. Um, there's an RJ11 port. I believe that's serial communication. And then here is a out-of-band management port. Um, so this would be what they call an RMI port or remote management interface. You could plug that into a switch that has a DHCP server on it. It'll get an address. Then you can log in and make it static if you want to um, and then manage this remotely. Um, you can also manage it from the front panel, which I'll show you in a little bit. Another big value add with this, such encryption, is very important with people with storage technology, especially when you might send these tapes off-site, um, is this. So generally speaking, if you want to encrypt your data on one of these systems, you'd have something like an ESKM server. You'd have technology to be able to leverage that. Um, with this system, they have a kit that you can buy, and it consists of two USB drives. One is a backup, but you'd plug that in there, and you'd start to be able to encrypt your data on your drives. And again, if you're, you set your tapes off-site and they got lost, somebody stole one, they wouldn't be able to pull their data off those drives. So, so a real simple way in order to be able to protect yourself within your environment. All right, so let's look at the front of this system. All right, so here's the front of our um, store ever MSL 1 slash 8 G2 auto loader. Um, certainly this yellow sticker kind of sticks out, but again, it talks about removing the lock for the robotics. Otherwise, this won't operate, so it's a good thing that they let you know, but you're going to want to peel this off. All right, and underneath we can see there's certainly a power button. There's also status indicators up top, ready, clean, attention, as well as error. And this is the OCP menuing system, um, or operator control panel is what that stands for. So you could do most of what the RMI does from this front interface. So things like set, figure out what the IP address, status, static IP address, um, you know, eject tapes through the mail slot. So why don't we why don't we pull out um, one of the magazines and, and take a look at that? Now, when this is powered on, you could certainly eject one of the magazines through the RMI or through this port as well. But when it's powered off, you got to use one of those ports that I one of those pinholes I showed you. Put a paper clip in it, and then this will come out. Right. Now, when you pull out a magazine like this and replace the tapes and put it back in, you're going to take the tape drive. It's going to want to rescan what's on the tapes again because it thinks something has changed. Um, this side has a mail slot. Again, you can control that through the, the RMI or through this OCP interface up here where you could change out tapes and not necessarily... Um, have an issue with the rescan of all the tapes that are you're making the drive aware of what you're doing. Right, and again, this is the magazine. This one holds four tapes going across. We should take a quick look at that, I suppose. Right, here's the back. Here's the part. Right, let's put this guy back in. Alright, so that is a tour of our store ever MSL 1 slash 8 G2 autoloader. Um, certainly tape is, is certainly an important technology today, um, especially when we look at ransomware attacks or people who need to archive data for a very, very long time. The cloud is nice, but there's certainly, you know, you got to think about the ROI as far as egress fees are concerned. Um, with local tapes, you could take things off site. Um, as well as recover as often as you want or test your backups without incurring any costs. So um, certainly having air-gapped um, systems makes a lot of sense when we talk about ransomware because even if it's connected to the cloud, you know, if something can connect to that, something can um, cause you issues up in this place. So taking a tape out and shipping it to a secondary site and moving it off-site is a great way to be able to protect yourself. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more videos.